visit svgcuts.com slash blog for tons of free SVGs, video tutorials, inspirational ideas, and the lowest price on Sure Cuts A Lot software. In addition to fonts and SVG files, Sure Cuts A Lot has some pre-installed shapes that you can use in your projects. And those shapes are located in the shape library, which is here. If you don't see this window here, you can open it by clicking on Window and then clicking on Shapes Library. Here if I close it and click on Window and go to Shapes Library, you'll see that it appears here. The Shapes Library panel allows you to view all of the shapes that are available here. It also allows you to mark certain groups as your favorite, and it also allows you to view the shapes that are being used in the current project, and we'll show you how that works as well. So using a shape is very simple. You first select the group of shapes that you want to choose from. In this case, I'm going to click on Summer, and I'm going to click on the Dolphin. And clicking on the Dolphin places the shape on my mat. You can resize, adjust, basically cut this however you'd like. In addition to the shapes that are already pre-installed and sure cuts a lot, you can actually create your own shape library. In order to create your own, you'll need to download and install a program called Scalibitup. Scalibitup is a free software that you can download from craftedge.com. So let's go ahead and do that. Start by opening up your web browser and bring up craftedge.com. Click on the Downloads button here at the top of the page. Scroll down a little bit and you'll see Scalibitup. Go ahead and click Download. You'll want to select the one for your operating system. Depending on how your web browser is configured, you'll probably be asked to save or open the file. Go ahead and hit Save. And in this case, I'm going to save it to the desktop. You can save it to My Documents or any location that you're familiar with. I'm going to save it to the desktop and click Save. Now that we've downloaded the software, we can go ahead and close our window. And on the desktop, we'll see the installer for Scalibitup. We'll go ahead and double click on it to begin the installation. Your system may or may not give you the security warning. Just go ahead and hit Run, OK, or Accept. You want to grant it permission to begin the installation. Once you've done that, the Welcome to Scalibitup 2 Setup Wizard will appear. Go ahead and hit Next to begin the installation. Check the radio button to accept the agreement and hit next. You can review this screen to check to make sure that your system meets the requirements and then hit next. The next screen will tell you where Scalibitup will be installed. You don't want to touch this, you can just hit next. And then you can decide whether or not you'd like a shortcut to the software on your desktop. Go ahead and hit next. And finally, the Scalibitup 2 is ready to install, so let's click Install. And now that it's installed, we can go ahead and launch it. So in order to create a library in Scalibitup, we need elements to make up that library. In this case, they're going to be SVG files. Okay, so what I've already done is I've created a folder that contains some of the SVG files that I want to put inside this library. I've made it easy on myself and I've taken all the elements that I want to put in this library and put them all in one folder. You don't have to do it this way. Scalibitup allows you to pull files from different locations on your system. So with Scalibitup open, the first thing we want to do is give our library a name. I'm going to call this one My Favorites. You can name it whatever you want. It's a good idea to give it a name that will help you identify what's in that library. Well, let's say you have a handful of scalloped shaped SVG files that you really love and you use them in all your projects and you want to make it into a library. Well, I'd suggest calling the library Scalloped Shapes or My Favorite Scalloped Shapes or something like that, okay? So now that we've named our new library, we need to start adding files to that library. And there's two ways of doing this, and it all depends on where your files are located. Since I've already created a folder that contains all of the files that I want to turn into a library, I can click Add Folder, 
And as you can see here, on the desktop is the folder that I created that contains those files. It's called library files. You could have a folder called flowers or scallops, and it doesn't matter. There's no right or wrong way to do this. All I'm doing at this point is selecting the folder that contains the SVG files that I want to turn into a library. Okay, so I'm going to highlight that. I'm going to hit OK. So as you can see, I've added the folder, and as a result, I've got a list of all the SVGs that will be included in my library. Okay, you can highlight each one to get a preview of what they look like. Okay, and this is what your actual library file will look like inside of Shortcuts a lot. And you can click on each of these to get a preview of what it's going to look like. Now let's say you're in the middle of creating a new library and you have to leave or you want to save this project so that you can add to the library in the future. Well, what I would suggest you do is click on File and go to Save Project As and then give it a name that will help you identify this process. Okay, so I'm just going to call it Library Files Project. Okay, and I'm going to hit Save. I'm saving it to the desktop and you can save it to wherever you'd like. Now the reason for this is let's say that you've got a library and then you get a new element in the future that you want to add to that library. Well, unless you save the project, you won't be able to add to it, okay? Okay, so now that I have my library project file saved, just to show you what this actually does, I'm going to close out of Scalib it up. And now this file here is not the actual file that we'll be using as the library file. This is just the project file, okay? And I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to go back and I'm going to open Scalib it up again. Now I can go in and hit File, Open Project, and open up this library files project that I just saved. And doing so lets me continue where I left off the last time I saved this. Okay, so if you want to add more elements, you can. Or if you want, you can go in and remove certain elements. So if you want to remove elements, you can by highlighting which element you want to remove and clicking the Remove button. And you can also add more elements to that library. Okay, so so far I've only showed you how to save a library project. But now we want to actually save this as an actual library so we can use it in Shortcuts a lot. Okay, so what we need to do is once we have the elements added, and once we've given it a name, and once we're happy with what's in that library, we can click the Export button. Or we can go to File and click Export. They both do the same thing. In doing so, it's going to ask us to give it a name. And I'm going to call it New Library. And I'm going to click Save. Okay, the message is telling us that the library was exported. To install, place the exported LCUT2 file into the library folder where Shortcuts a Lot 2 is installed. And we're going to hit OK. Okay, so I'm going to close Scalib it up. And I just want to show you here that we've got two files here. The first one, remember, is the project file. This one we use by going into Scalib it up, going to File, Open Project, and double clicking on this file here. And again, this is going to allow us to edit this library, okay? Now this new file here, this LCUT2 file, this is the actual library file that Shortcuts a Lot can use. Shortcuts a Lot can't use this one. It can only use the LCUT library. 